Hey, Chef. Welcome to our user spotlight, Numbers Dialogue. Thanks a lot for being here. Quick introduction. Maybe I'll go first and then we'd love to sort of know a lot more from you. So, hey, everybody watching. Anuja Desai, founder at Numbers. We basically are here to break the language barrier on the internet with the power of AI. We allow video dubbing and video subtitling, a, a lightning a fast speed with a self serve tool. And we are here today, joined by Shiv from Harappa team who's been sort of uh, leveraging the power of AI through our platform. And we'll try and dig deeper into his experience of, uh, with Dubbers and apart from where else, what else is happening in the video production space at scale. So welcome, welcome to the show, Shiv. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think thank you for making our lives easier. You guys have saved us a lot of nights from being in office for a long, for long nights. Now, quick introduction. <clears throat> I'll spend 30, 30 seconds on myself and the larger part of the introduction on Harappa. So my name is Shiv. I am a filmmaker, producer, director, writer with experience in advertising. I've graduated from National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad with a master's in film and video communication. <clears throat> Quickly jumping on to Harappa. <clears throat> I think I was actually directing a lot of commercials independently before Harappa came knocking. And the idea was to create learning content for working professionals, but not just, not just any form of learning content, social, behavioral and cognitive learning content in the form of certain skills that we call thrive skills. So Harappa has been, you know, the founders of Harappa, Ashreshi Singh and Pramat Raj Sena, who's also the founder of ISB and Ashoka. So there could not be any sort of more bet, like there could not be a better pedigree team to start something like this, right? And I was just fortunate enough to join the bandwagon about three years ago. When I was asked to take lead on creating a video studio at Harappa. Uh, because mm -hmm. I've been producing a lot of content based on slides. That's essentially how every content company initially starts. And when they employ people like us, they start, you know, producing higher fidelity content. Currently, Harappa produces a lot of video content across two of its major product lines. The first being IPJ, which is an LMS, which is integrated program journey, which is a learner management system that has been engineered within from within the Harappa headquarters. And a lot of our content goes there. These, the, the, the IPJ is essentially used in the form of blended learning journeys where you'll have live masterclasses, async content. That's that, that's the product that houses all of that. The other product that we have is an only async library called Thriversity, which has mm -hmm. only content of course video content divided into these social behavioral cognitive skills but only video content and it's it's a great product because you can track monitor completion rates leaderboards it's basically a full stack tech product where video plays a critical role in delivery of the content that harappa is made for so that's essentially what harappa does and that's how the ecosystem is divided into its products yeah Got it. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's quite a array of uh, products within sort of startup. That's great. I think talk to us a little more about uh, who does Harappa target, right? Who are the usual clientele uh, when it comes to Harappa? Who does Harappa target? There are two answers to that. The first is anyone who wants to go beyond technical skills and look at skills that are just not as tangible. So Harappa's because of the you know pedigree of the founders, Harappa has been a believer of the fact that there are skills that are not always visible, but they are the backbone of your uh, of of your professional career. So how do you communicate? How do you problem solve? How do you manage crisis? How do you deal with stakeholders? These are softer. I hate the word soft skills because they are essentially not soft. They are so bloody critical to your growth, and yet we call them soft skills. But because it's the sort of globally accepted term, let me use that. So soft skills essentially. Um, these are the skills we focus on and continuing that who doesn't need soft skills, anyone who's ever working in a professional environment and not even professional environment. You need soft skills to know how to buy vegetables. Also, you may not need <laughs> to code, but you need to know how to communicate to be able to buy vegetables. Right? So it's essentially, and therefore anyone who's above 18, who's a working professional to you know, your last day of leaving work. That's, that's, that's the sort of target audience we have at Harappa. And, but the modality of selling the courses at Harappa comes in the form of going B2B. So if let's say mm -hmm. Dubverse were, were a 500 member team in the need of what we traditionally call L and D goals, uh, they, mm -hmm. they can reach out to us or we reach out to them to solve 
their most pertinent L&D problems in the form of, do they need a first time manager program? Do they need a women's development program? Do they need a program for their women CXO? Do they need a program for design thinking? So we craft mm -hmm. these products for organizational goals, L&D goals. And largely we speak to HR heads and L&D heads, but anyone, the modality is that you go to an organization and the organization gets their people in. Got it. Got it. Very interesting. I think let's go a little deeper when you when you say that you sort of curate these courses for them. So I'm sure there is one is the curriculum part to it, which uh, definitely you have right, right experts to do it. But the video part to it, so maybe let's talk about that. And uh, definitely what are, what our viewers usually are who are creating a lot of lot of video content already, right? So what are your learnings or what is you we want to share with the audience who want to produce more content at scale and specifically video content? So I think one thing that Harappa stands for very categorically is that traditionally we want to break away from the bias that learning content has to be boring. Most learning content, the entire learning content market, unfortunately, is seen as a very vendor dominated Oh, you're the right vendor, you're the right vendor. <clears throat> nobody looks at us as partners or nobody looks at us like as, as learning consultants, but We've tried to change that by making our content deeply cinematic. Like you'd never, you'd never possibly find anyone else in the country selling B2B courses on communication, but making sure that the lighting is perfect, making sure that the, <laughs> the, the, the framing is cinematic, making sure the sure. music and the audio design is perfect because Harap, at Harappa and all of my team members and people who are not my, in my team also believe that you when you're producing content, be it for any need, you're not just producing it for boring consumption. You are actually competing with OTT. You're competing with the Netflix. <laughs> India is playing Australia in, this, in the final of the World Cup. And your organization has told you to watch a course on communication. You're not going to do that. Let's be fairly honest, right? The, the, there is great, there are many obstacles to, you know, learning communication because as a country, we've been aware of the fact that you don't want to learn. Mm -hmm. It's been thopoed by some leadership and that's why I have to do it because it helps me in my appraisals or whatever, right? That's the traditional sort of journey. But can I make the content <laughs> more engaging through writing, through storytelling, through instructional design, through, through lighting, production, design, that someone actually just wants to see it, right? It's a bet. Right. May, may not, mm -hmm. but I'm still produce it with that ethos. So a large part of our content actually gets produced in the form of long format video courses, which are, you know, hour long divided into modules. The other is, for example, a property that has done really well for us called Thrive Masters. So Thrive Masters are essentially personalized anecdotes of great professionals who come in and talk about how they solve their stakeholder management problems. So for example, we'd have the ex CMO at Coca-Cola or Epigamia come in and talk mm -hmm. about what happened when they did a marketing plan and it sucked. And then he talked about how he solved for it. Where did he go wrong? What are some of the frameworks they used? Very, very anecdotal. These are what we call Thrive Master. So we keep innovating on formats despite using video, the style, mm -hmm. the format, the storytelling. We consistently and constantly sort of innovate on that all interesting interesting so let's go deeper in the content creation journey right so what are the tools that you usually use when you're doing obviously these are heavy files then we are talking about right because the production is very very high so let's maybe uh, go through that journey once so technically two things we we managed to build a studio in our office that's number one so it starts from building a comfortable studio space number one number two we make sure that we are shooting on 4k 10 bit high quality full frame cameras Mm -hmm. <laughs> critical to allow if you use two cameras and a lot of other because of resolution it allows us to play and make the whole piece more dynamic we use cinematic lights like proper we just don't go flat led panel plastered on someone's face we are very 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 picky about how we light the product how, the, the talent in that case number one now when that's the production bit right we maintain a log sheet of the good takes and the bad and whatever things i want to use so we take elements and principles from cinematic filmmaking, narrative filmmaking that I've done and we deploy them here to make our content more engaging. Number two, we don't get rid of bloopers. So for example, <laughs> our, 
we try and not keep our content very clean. So sometimes if someone's fumbling, it's okay. We don't cut, right? It's just nice. more honest like that, right? In terms of post-production, I think uh, we use, so our editors use the Adobe Suite to edit <clears throat> content. I personally use FCP because I'm not a trained editor, but you know, and I edit quite a bit, but I personally use FCP because that's what I've grown up on. But most mm -hmm. of my games, the softwares that we use are Premiere Pro, Da Vinci for color grading and After Effects for all our motion graphics work. These are the sort of suites that we use. Nice, nice. What parts uh, have you already introduced uh, in the workflow when it comes to the video creation? So uh, you're, you're talking to someone who's slightly older when it comes to video. So I'm like, oh, AI, nahi, please <laughs> it makes me feel insecure about my job every day. But what we do is, let's say a lot of animation asset creation we use ai for so for example if you want to create hmm. quick backgrounds we want to remove background so uh, after effects has great pen tools to be able to separate the you know individual in the foreground but we would struggle with you know making backdrop so we don't have to essentially now do that a large part of our <clears throat> set extensions happen on photoshop using the ai content aware and you know, generative fill feature. So we use a lot of generative fill to ensure spaces have a certain sense of quality and similar. Other than that, a lot of audio for some strange reason, AI does well for me in audio than it does well on video, right? Oh, nice. So audio cleanup, cutting and patching music at scale. What happens sometimes you tend to lose files, right? Let's say I've lost my project file and I have a video clip that has audio and music and dialogue baked in. At many times, AI will come in and save the day of patching it correctly, cutting it. So we do it for all of those cosmetic changes that we need. And of course, subtitling. And that's like, imagine a company producing thousand hours of content annually. I need another editor to sit and type. So most of it is actually subtitles and transcript. Got it. So more on the audio side and then, then yeah. the subtitling bit definitely. Yeah. Cool. I think talking more of subtitles, I think it's it's one of those pieces of uh, what we've also seen. People who realize it are very, very important. But people earlier in the journey are like, this is more of a good to have. So what is your thought uh, of adding subtitles primarily to video content that's being produced and more informational content because that's where we need more Correct. attention or more understanding side. So what's your thought on adding subtitles to videos? So I think it's it's every piece of video content that goes out has to have and should have subtitles now because of the freedom that they allow me to consume the content with right i know for a lot of people they're very sticky about the fact font but i had taking away from my screen and this and that but i tell them please understand that let's say someone is on a mobile phone traveling from one place to another in a public transport in a metro headphones are noisy like you know the environment is noisy I, I was reading data that said 80% of content consumed is actually consumed without audio. Correct. Right? How do we as learning content creators then actually ensure that people are listening to us, which is watching is the new listening. So I have to embed, I have to embed content and subtitles very critically and allows me to do language support, multilingual support, choice. So it's a no brainer for me personally. Got it. Interesting. I think coming on to the use of Dubbers within within the Harappa ecosystem. So obviously, like you mentioned that you're selling a lot of learning courses to these B2B or people directly as well. So talk to us before Dubbers and after Dubbers maybe. Were you already doing it manually from a translation standpoint into other languages or was this something that got new unlocked at Harappa? No, so we were not doing it. So, so let's let me let me. So Premiere Pro has a feature where I can click and it generates uh, subtitles for me within the software, right? Sure. Uh, it's not accurate because a large part of the speakers that we have are Indian. So the accent has its unique flavor and texture, right? So what I would say is, and I, we, we did an analysis that if I were to use that uh, on that feature on Premiere Pro, I would still need a 50 to 60% manual intervention post that. That's number one. It's very laggy on the systems. It's very heavy on the system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, generating that within every, imagine 20,000 frames, every frame becomes essentially a separate title. It becomes challenging on the system. So it was a, one of our producers who, you know, said, let's use Dubverse and figure it out. I was not aware of the tool. And I said, does this make your life easy? And that's the metric of the tool that I use because 
to be fairly honest, I don't get to sit on smaller everyday operational tools. So what I do is I ask my team three simple questions. I ask them, does this make your life easy? Does this allow you to go home on time? And does it come good to me? These are genuinely the three. And, I, and I'm not like, I genuinely, these are the metrics by which I ask my team these questions and judge a tool. And largely if I get any two, I'm like, okay, let's test it. But in this case, it was also, uh, I think then my, my production team has never come back to me saying that there needs to be an alternative tool. So I'm clearly sure it's working. <laughs> Nice. That's more on the subtitle bit. But if we talk about the dubbing piece where we are uh, able to sort of translate uh, these uh, video from an audio standpoint to a different language with video dubbing, uh, what are your thoughts on that? And how do you think that's sort of impacted the, impacted the deliverables that you have with your clients? So I'll give you a small example. A massive, massive FMCG client came to us saying that, listen, I need subtitles for this in XYZ languages, right? The traditional modality that I have in mind would be to call up my friends at a studio and say, listen, can you take it, dub, mix it, master it and send it back. And that's, that's what I was going for. But then my production team told me, listen, let's try this out. And I was very sure of the fact because it's, 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 it's very difficult to gauge that something like this can happen on its own at a click. Right. And when I think we translated the English content mm -hmm. to, if I'm not wrong to about three languages, right. And it was Hindi, and I don't want to sound wrong, but it was Hindi, Kannada, and I think one more. Are these the languages that you support? Yeah, yeah, we do, yes. Yeah. All so Indian they, languages primarily we support, so yeah. Yeah, three languages, and there was one more need, oh no, four languages, four Indian languages, and there was one more need to do it in Chinese. Yeah. Right? And I was like, okay, figure it out. And we did it, and how do we judge what's the accuracy of that? I don't know the other two or three languages. So I actually took out a transcript, printed it out, took it to a friend. And if I'm not wrong, they said it's about 95%, 98% sort of accurate, right? And the the two percent could be, and we got it tested by with our engineering team also. So they said just use this, continue using this. And we undertook a massive exercise of converting almost 30 hours of content on Thriversity into the then the three languages. Yeah. So the Thriversity project, if you like Thriversity, which is our library project, all the top courses that we have, they're called Thrive Masters, which is a compiled total of about 50 courses that about 35 hours of content. It's all in three languages. Four, I think there's Hindi, English, recorded in English is Hindi, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, one more. And it's all, it's all now been, it's all, it has been integrated and it's working flawlessly and yeah. Nice, nice. That's great to know. That's great to hear always. And, and that you mentioned, right, that for you to believe of how can this really happen at a click of a button, I think that's exactly the point that we try to drive to the larger audience as well, that it is definitely now possible. Obviously, it still requires that last, last mile in a certain way where you want to get it validated because it's a of brand course. name and we also are trying to build tools around it. But I think that's exactly where we get that reaction that how is this really possible. Great. So maybe talk to us a little more about what sort of time or commercially, how, how did it help you as compared to the traditional way if you want to go and translate these videos? So very simple commercially. So, okay. So from a time perspective, it's a massive savior of time because manual sort of intervention would have needed me to go to a studio, book a studio by the hour, find a, you know, voice or a translator or a transcript writer, uh, get them to record, get them to dub, send the files over, download those files, consistently speak. The guy's possibly gone home uh, after the recording. And if something's off, I get to know that two days later. The guy. So it's it's a, it's a like the telegram or telegraph and Instagram. Nice. Like I, I was writing letters and then someone came and said, listen, why are you writing letters? And Instagram post, tag the location and say you're here. So it's that sort of a revelation. Commercially also, it allows me to just reduce the number of people involved in the decision making process. Mm -hmm. The ability to do feedback again. Will I get the same voice again? Will I get the same human being again? Will I all of that? So commercially, though it's it's a game changer and because also it's it's a, it's a game changer on time. Voice doesn't get tired, right? Imagine the number of voices <laughs> I have to get. And what's your uh, sort of usual uh, feedback from the end users been be it from 
the the app that you have or be the larger FFCG client that you guys were working on? What do you hear usually from a feedback standpoint? So, okay. So to be fairly honest, I, I don't engage on that side of the business because what happens is the tech guys get the feedback because when the product gets authored, it's a lot of, you know, other layers that get into, you know, the authoring stage, but purely in terms of, purely in terms of does the dubbed content sound synthetic or not? I have not heard it impacting my learning. See, of course, there will be a sense of difference to say that there won't be is, is, is a gross overestimation of, but what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that no one has ever come to me and told me that we have not learned enough because the voice, you know, sounded off the need that the voice is solving, which is hearing Pramat Raj Sinha, the founder of ISP talk in Kannada far outweighs the some slips of sing or a, or, or a glitch here and there, which is few, which are few and far between. Imagine tomorrow if I were to get a Shah Rukh Khan to do a module for me and he were to speak in, you know, Kannada, the sense of community is so strong or Telugu or maybe Chinese or Africa, like whatever languages in Africa they are there. The sense of community will far outweigh the fewer glitches, which anyway will take time to get solved. So I haven't received any sort of impediments to learning from or that feedback from. <laughs> Got it. Interesting. And that's, I would like to add primarily the reason why sort of the idea of Dubverse was also born. This was more uh, during COVID, right, where we sort of wanted to take that, edu take education digital. And for a country like India, how do we really do that without breaking right. that language barrier? Right. 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 All the free courses for that matter, or the YouTube university that we see primarily has been in English. So yeah. that was the sort of core idea <laughs> that, born, that if what part of this can technology redo without a human have to sort of go back and redo the whole thing. Correct. I think while we are on this uh, topic of languages, would love to get your more thoughts from a larger perspective, right? Of a, of a, of a tech uh, landscape that's shaping up now. Uh, be it India, be it globally otherwise, because what we've seen primarily still internet is predominated by English uh, content that we see. But now we are seeing that language barrier break. Netflix giving like a Kannada subtitle from uh, these ed texts, from Harappa creating so much content. In... So what are your thoughts of how this landscape is changing from ed tech and a language limelight? See, I think there are far smarter, massive entrepreneurs in the business who can talk about big ideas, like how's the landscape changing and all of that. I'm not that, but I'll tell you how it should change, how I want it to change or how I would like it to be seen. Uh, the true impact of learning will happen once digit, like having content in English is like only having public schools, uh -huh. right? Like having only, imagine if there were only DPSs and moderns and going, these are Delhi based schools, you know, the, the spoiled bratty ones. Imagine these are the, and I'm from one of them, but I'll still say it out loud that imagine you only have those. English language is great, but it still largely renders a lot of people in access, right? And that has to change. If I can drive, why is it that every time we speak about how to improve your communication, the course is designed in English, delivered in English, advertised in English, right? right. Why, can, why can someone in, 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 Gujarati not be a great communicator. So if I have a, if I have a framework called purpose, audience, and message, which is a great tool that we use at Harappa to say that the purpose, audience, message is a great framework for you to be able to communicate effectively. The same principle holds true for any damn language. The same principle, Gujarati may be, you know, it'll be called something else, but it's the, the tenets of the principle are the same. So language democratizes opportunity democratizes you know and tools like dubbers are really solving that need and, and i think we need more of you guys to ensure that how else do, do you listen to you know the top ceos of the world how is there great merit in if i were the if i were actually let's say a large massive company like let's say apple for example who has yeah. a gold mine of steve jobs quotes and you know, marketing moments, I would actually just translate them out and distribute them for free in different languages. I would actually tie up with an organization like you and say, listen, can you translate this in 10 languages and upload it for free somewhere? Mm -hmm. So language and lingual sort of opportunity is critical, not important there. 
But do you think it's a uh, sort of more of a demand supply game, right? Because so far the adoption of the internet primarily had been a little more restrictive to the top where it was all English. And now from where, where you are in certain way, do you see that changing? Of course. And if it is changing, then see, the larger, the consumer honestly do not, Steve Jobs said that the consumer does not know what, what he or she wants. Right? <laughs> But, and I'm a firm believer of that. Would they like to have content in regional languages? Of course. They just don't ask for it because they don't know it's possible or not. And mm. it's like they don't like, know if a Netflix, man, Netflix, how do I tell Netflix that it'll be great for me to have, you know, who's going to listen? So it is, it is incumbent and it is the duty of these massive organizations and people like us and people like Netflix and people like channels to provide that. It is, it is important. It will see an uptick in subscription and people are realizing that. So I think it's important and it has to be offered by the giants first. You'll see an adoption. People are not going to come, you know, you'll see that in the form of decrease in subscriptions, declining growth rate, declining engagement rate. So that graph that we see on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, all of that, we tend to see it as engagement, but there are, there's a lot of golden data hidden in that that can you know prom prompt and promote these responses i think let's go to your back to your past life which is the movie business how do you see that i think earlier uh, movies and specifically bollywood used to be only in one language right now we see all of these bigger large banner movies coming in four to five different languages so what's what's your thought on that yeah it just expands it's, it's critical because it expands reach we are a country which is very right if you were to just look at it from a screen to movie they show us and my numbers are not correct because I, I'm not actively there, but I'm saying India should not have more than what? 5,000, 10,000, 5,000 screens, right? No. 6,000 screens. Let's assume that. If I were to talk about US, I'm sure it's the numbers, you know, I can Google it up and I'm sure yeah. the numbers 10x. And, and because it's English, the, mov the movies produced in, you know, Hollywood get trans, you know, they, 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 they release all across the world. So their mm. number of are higher. What do we do in our case, right? <laughs> we have to ensure that in order for our films to be more profitable, they have to be, you know, like beverage companies have liquid to tongue as a, you know, to say that I need to get my liquid to mouth, liquid to tongue. That's my critic. And the same thing is with movies. So your screen to eyes have to be maximized. And for that, you realize that language in India is actually a very, very important way for you to write to do that. So I think both important and Bollywood is doing that. They've, they've been smart enough now to realize that it's important. People would like to, a language may be different, but the yeah. cost that binds us as a nation is the same. So yeah. a, 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 kuchi, kabhi gum will do well in the Southern part of the country till the time we are not nosy about not releasing it there for India. The emotion is the same and you know, so, yeah. I think they've been a little uh, late uh, in doing so, but I think now definitely that option has been great. And I believe OTT is one of the reasons which has uh, really pushed them in that direction uh, because of the uh, sort of deep penetration that OTT has been able to do uh, in India uh, right. as well from a regional uh, standpoint. Right. I think that really moved it. No, no, absolutely. And I think OTT has just forced a lot of giants to even make better films. Forget about subtitling, just make better content. <laughs> So I think what happens is with smaller scale and your more, your, the hierarchies that you need to cross to implement something new are much shorter. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you'll always find AI, for example, as a tool being adopted the fastest by a single room studio creator on YouTube. Right? Yeah. I'm doing it at home because the stakes are the lowest riding when I have nothing to screw up. So I, even if two of my videos screw up, it's fine, right? Then there will be, you know, group creators, then small enterprises, then large enterprises, then these. So the larger legacy you are, the slower you adopt new tech and new stuff, but you disseminate it the maximum when you, when, when you adopt it. So I think right. you'd actually see suddenly the quality of people producing videos on YouTube has Netflix and OTT and Bollywood running, you know, who the hell, like they've been using cameras worth 10 crores, five crores and someone shooting it on their iPhone. Uh -huh. I'm not saying, of course, they can project it on screen. You'll see the difference, but I'm saying you'll see early adoption of tech at the smaller artisanal level and right. then see, uh, 
it starts as a parallel movement it will start as a discord server somewhere and yeah, then it will yeah. get there yes i think that's exactly the reason why we wanted to have this chat because i think harappa has been one of those early movers from adopting uh, the ai translation or ai dubbing piece into the whole ecosystem so we thought that we should definitely get uh, the early movers on to to really tell the world of how that how the adoption is really happening already it's not just a youtube creator right. that's using it's it's getting more deeper it is real business in a certain way where uh, the content that's being produced with ai is real business uh, creates more stickiness right. with the clients takes you a little longer with within the journey that you are creating them for so i think this has been great any final thoughts that you have would love to sort of hear them out nothing i keep thanking the people who make our jobs easy you know i remember in film school we were introduced to a machine it was 2014 or 15 we were mm-hmm. at an editing class and we were all given these nice machines to edit on and we were editing our films and we had edited the whole piece out and my professor came and he said listen why don't you now do it the way it was done pehle like, uh-huh. so there's this massive machine that's the size of a room right it's called mm-hmm. a steam deck machine right they gave us these film rolls imagine for one second of film there are 24 frames on a on a system i have edited an entire 10 minute sequence in about an hour in about 40 minutes and this requires me to look up chop put it back stitch it together stick it with the glue see it in the light again and do that right and i realized i i thanked my tech more now when i did that exercise what took me 20 days to do it took me 20 days a month to edit about if i'm not wrong 10 minutes of piece because yeah. i was of course, we were not trained we were bad at it and you're we fumbling and there were resource constraints and all of that but it did take sure. us time pretty days as a group to do it versus 10 minutes i am personally very thankful to tech and you know products like yours because they save us time save our marriages allow us to go back home and yeah that's the only thing i have to say thank you and yeah. keep making such stuff yeah and it is definitely to make the job easier not to take away the job do something else with that time and become better at something else yes yes 100% do more of what you do better rather than uh, yeah. just writing basic stuff so i think that's that's definitely the idea and we are uh, definitely very very excited to work with a lot more educational content and obviously with harappa in the longer uh, run as well super. and keep doing great work together super thanks a lot